Hi. The back story in this episode is about the report on glauconite pellets or pelletal glauconite from offshore of Sangumukha which occurs or occurred then with a relict sand deposit and the second part will be devoted to our program in three selected beaches of Birinam uh, Harbor and uh, to the north and south of it. First about the backstory on block night. This paper that uh, I and uh, Terry wrote and published in Indian Journal of Marine Science was actually very really interesting in the sense that uh, Purna Chandra Rao, a marine geologist attached to the oil, uh, National Oceanography, within a year or two came up with an amendment to our report. In other words, he had made a report or made, uh, located the same deposit, one of the cruises probably, that enabled him to locate the occurrence of uh, what we called as gloconite or uh, green sand or uh, pelletal greens, whatever you call it. And redesignated this as chamosite. Well, of course, it is actually a refining or refinement on our find, that's all. Because we did not go into the X-ray diffraction studies and you know, X-ray crystallography of the mineral. Instead, we had uh, gone only by the what is called the morphology and uh, environment in which it occurred. So what uh, Purna Chandra Rao said was, this is actually again a pellet, a fecal pellet as it is called because it is the excreta of the marine organisms. And uh, then, uh, you know, it underwent a process called antigenesis and in during which iron was absorbed by the clay structure or the pellet. And uh, this is actually basically an uh, extreme case of ex iron rich uh, fecal pellets and uh, it is named as uh, chamosite and so on and so forth. Of course, you know, the whole point there is on oh, Shangamugam we have a relict sand body about which, you know, people never worried even today. There is uh, practically very little work on the offshore of, uh, you know, in so-called territory, territorial waters of uh, Kerala, in spite of the fact that uh, territorial waters and the sediment in the territorial waters are going to affect uh, the processes and the comfort of the beaches and the people who are settled in the back shore of the beaches. So. That was, uh, that is about, uh, you know, how glauconite became chamosite and, uh, as reported by our friend uh, Purna Chandra Rao there, about our uh, study in the beach or, in other words, what we were, you know, it is actually a very interesting study because it is one of the experiments that the geologists conduct uh, in order to figure out, experiment I say, in order to figure out this direction of sand movement or sediment movement or uh, even water movement in the streams or uh, what is called uh, movement of groundwater in the aquifers. What is done is, you know, if there is a family of uh, organic dyes called uh, rhodamine and what we used was rhodamine B. It is a very harmless dye which can be introduced without any harm to the environment or ecology of the, of the system. So the rhodamine uh, B was, uh, you know, we purchased some, some more than a kilogram of it because that is what we needed. And uh, then second thing is, you know, application of the dye or coating of the dye in the 
natural sandra so for that we had to go we know we selected what is called the, the rock home beach it is a pocket beach north of uh, bidinjam fishing harbor and uh, the adimalathura beach which is the south of fishing harbor and uh, the beach within the fishing harbor facing the what is the existing north south breakwater so we had collected roughly 50 kilograms each from all the three beaches of of sand or sediment and from the what is you know from where it is actually from the beach face shore face you know middle of the shore face let us say the shore face is not very huge it is wide actually only in adimalathura whereas in uh, the pocket beach as well as in the vidinjam bay beach uh, the Uh, not only that the shore face was narrower com- in comparison with what was it like in Adimalathura, but uh, more steep. That is the difference. So the sand was brought over to our lab in uh, Shastamangalam, you know. And then, you know, the natural so-called processing, you know, how do you process it? You wash it very clean of all the salt water. How do you do that? You know, add a little bit of silver nitrate uh, to the wash, wash water, then you, know, you will realize if there is no precipitation found, then actually it is clean. The, you know, the sand is clean of all sodium chloride. And other uh, seawater salts, uh, ions, met- metallic and non-metallic ions available in seawater. So then, uh, you know, the whole process of drying it up and uh, then uh, to get rid of the moisture and then it will be followed by adding the dye and adding the dye is actually a very interesting part it is actually a hard work absolutely no doubt I to thank the team Terry Machado for this work I had only suggested the procedure and the process and of course they had added their own amendments to what I said but then basically it is all what my framework is what I gave and uh, then you know the they took uh, one kilogram two kilogram size the samples of the uh, sand then each was uh, coated with this dye and uh, the dye is actually colorless in the when you add it to the sand that is the interesting thing it will be it will show this dyed sand will show what is called a uh, blue the violet fluorescence under a uv lamp so so this whole process on uh, you know three different uh, sacks full of sand was performed then uh, you know, another thing is you know we had to check every sample you know the bulk sample or uh, whatever we have for the coating the level of coating the satisfactory level of coating with the uh, rhodamin b that is very easy not at all a tough thing take a spoonful, t- tablespoon, you know, a teaspoonful in a petri dish and check it out under the microscope with a, on which st- microscope, st- on, uh, over which uh, what is called the UV lamp is uh, shining or made to shine. So we will know, you know, by using a needle, we can uh, turn over the particles of sand, grains of sand, and we can uh, decide whether our coating process was uh, sufficient enough or uh, whether it is insufficient. If it is insufficient, we go repeat the whole process. So there is a cross-check before the sand dyes, the dyed color, or I mean dyed sand is released in the environment. That is one part, sand is ready. Now the second part. So we have to lay down a grid. You know, we have to, we planned everything in our office. We had to lay down a grid in the shore face and, uh, you know, with uh, something like uh, uh, 10, uh, 10 meter, 10 meter square grid. Each cell is a 10 meter square grid. Like that, uh, five, uh, in, in five cells in, the, in a row. And uh, along the column, it is another three or four cells. That all depends, number of cells along the column. Uh, it depends on the shore face uh, width or the steepness of the shore face or whatever. So, and uh, of course, you know, we had, uh, we couldn't, we, nobody can do a, a grid, extend the grid down to the plunge point 
of the of the brake rails because you know anything you fix there will be washed away so what we did you know and, and on the land side of the plunge point of course you know if you as long as you use very uh, long uh, stumps and then you know what we did uh, we, we tied uh, some a plastic rope you know to identify the grid cells you know along the along and across so that was set you know this is something we had just uh, imagined or vis visualized in our mind and then implemented in the field and the ones that is then uh, you know the it is only replication the other two features so the big day came and okay then another part is another vexing part was how to resample once you release and what is the interval of sampling well you know but we had a uh, uh, only a crude way of measuring the what is called the current strength you know the beaches uh, only the beach in adimala thurwa had as a kind of a, a littoral uh, drift or a littoral stream or a littoral current so there what we did we used a coconut husk and uh, you know two people will stand you know 10 meter apart in the break plunge point away from the plunge point and uh, then uh, you know the coconut husk is uh, dropped into the water and the third fellow will be on the beach uh, watching the you know use it with a strap cock measuring the distance or the time that was uh, taken by the coconut husk to reach the other person or vice versa so you know then now to that we can get the estimate of the uh, littoral streams uh, velocity okay whereas in the uh, steeper beach faces like in the in our uh, what is called the, the pocket beach uh, we called then it a rock home pocket beach and the bay pocket bay beach in these two places the rock there was a littoral current of course slightly north the limit we can observe you know very simple it all depends on Uh, you know how careful you can uh, identify the what is called the the wave crest and how it is getting bent which, which end of the wave crest is uh, getting the uh, breaking uh, breaker point or the plunge point and the which take which end is not if you have a the south end of the uh, the wave crest hitting the plunge point first then naturally the current is towards the north and uh, the opposite is true if the current uh, or the current will be to the south if the uh, breaker crest hits the north side of point in the yeah, north early point in the what is called uh, the the plunge step or the plunge point okay so that is not a very difficult thing you know only thing is you have to have some knowledge or exposure to knowledge you will have uh, you can acquire knowledge by exposure to book and uh, papers and uh, you know and even compilations so how do you sample this is the question i was posing not for sampling you know you needed uh, those days we had only i would only you know paper cards in other words uh, craft paper if you want to call it that way what we we purchased some uh, sheets of craft paper we also purchased the uh, eight or so the what is called cross star staff used by land surveyors in other words cross staff is a stick you know <laughs> iron rod at the top of which at one end of the which, which there will be a wooden block in which uh, there is a marking on the on it uh, you know a grooves are cut rather exceedingly neatly cut two grooves cutting at right angles so that is what you use for you know you uh, the the grooves are used for land surveying at the time of land surveying whereas we were interested in the block or the wooden block which will be rather 4 inch by 4 inch uh, in area so we used a certain side sort of sticking tape and uh, then uh, you know glue stuck those pieces of paper in the wooden on the wooden block of the cross staff and and these the the the, the 
upper side of this this paper sheet of paper, I mean craft paper that was coated with uh, a thin layer of grease you know even if it is too much there is no problem but you have to be optimize the use of grease and in other our assumption is you know that when you stick this craft off in the opposite direction you know, with the block facing down on the beach and quickly you lift it up then what you get is a sample of a one grain thick layer of the sediment and we tried this uh, in actually in the field in the in the shore face before actually launching this so when we tried with one of those it was a great success absolutely no problem one grain thick i'm not saying you know the entire uh, you know, surface will be fit stuck or covered with uh, you know sand particles no because the beach sand has a you know variety of sand part sand grains variety of sizes of sand grains and then therefore what will happen is the layer will be more larger grains than smaller grains getting stuck to. so that is fairly okay and uh, then you know of course we proceeded with in this direction and uh, you know we had a you know on the first day of we we tried our experiment in the rock home beach uh, and what was done then was you know we laid out all the grid everything and uh, the dyed sediment which was collected from the same beach was released i was also enjoying the work in the water and in uh, having actually a great day with the uh, sea water baths so uh, of course naturally my crew my my group also were enjoying it except uh, mr ab vergis which was who was in charge of uh, you know doing all the sticking of the the, the paper craft paper on the <laughs> craft stuff and then labeling when uh, samples have come back and uh, safely storing it etc etc is a bit and is given to abi and uh, we had also two technical helpers from the msd to assist us for whatever you know point what you know do the rand also including so by about 10 o'clock what we did we released our sand and then we waited for let's say 30 minutes then you know from the center of the grid set from the center of the grid set a, a sample each was collected at the end of a race of 30 minutes and then we waited for another 30 minutes and another 30 minutes and another 30 minutes in other words over a period of two hours we collected something like four sets of samples of the one grain thick layer or that is what is uh, sitting on the surface of the beach face using our uh, you know contraption of the cross staff etc etc and uh, we enjoyed the work uh, i mean immensely because you know our retrieval was great the, in, in other words i am not saying like i earlier to say it was not uh, covering the entire uh, paper car but we had plenty more than 70 60% of the card was stuck or was having the sand particles and then you know what is it the next step say very carefully prepared so when this work was done completed you know it was like 12:30 or 1 when we are ready to leave the beach then one thing happened you know this was repeated in the bay beach as well as uh, you know opposite of the breakwater as well as in the adimalathura beach then when we were working on a different day in the bay beach and uh, you know there people were a group of people including women were also distilling these what is we you know quote and quote spurious liquor local brew and uh, you know they were watching us in our hard work it is hard work you know, they would not have seen <laughs> any government agent or government persons working for a government agency doing this for, a, uh, for as a responsibility of their work as a part of their work but they were all surprised and finally you know when they, you know, we had an interval of 30 minutes each for sample between the sample collections and this uh, young lady came out to me and said uh, sir 
You should take this bottle. It is a fantastic uh, brew we have made. I said, why? What? Etc. I did not understand, you know, what. No, it is free. You can take it. It is our gift. You have been working very hard to protect our beach. Or, uh, what, you know, so just do something with our own beach. So then I said, ah, don't you get, uh, are you not, uh, you know, what, meandering the rule of the uh, law of the land? And I said, yeah, sure, you know. Don't you have any reprimand coming from the parish priest? Yes, he also will uh, reprimand us on the next uh, you know, Sunday service. Then how do you, what do you do? No, we will be, uh, they will clamp uh, what is called a fine and uh, we are ready to pay the fine. So finally I accepted the bottle because there is a spirit, spirit inside and outside when uh, handing over a gift to another person or another group. And of course, you know, the brew we gave to our driver and I never tracked how many of uh, our team members enjoyed that brew. So that is how we did the field part of the tracing of uh, the rhodamin B dyed sand in order to know the direction of drift in the neighborhood in the Vilinjam Bay as well, Fishing Harbor Bay and adjacent beaches. I will come with another story the next time.